welcome you. You are welcome, sir. Praise the Lord. If the rain has not taken you, hallelujah, away, I said, praise the Lord. A rain of blessing today. A rain of power today. Miracle in your life. Salvation in your life. Deliverance in your life. And every area of your life will taste and experience the healing touch of the Lord in Jesus' name. When is your blessing? I said, when is your blessing? Now, now, now. Here, with us, to you, and in all the places where we're connected together, we connect with the power of God. We connect with the glory of God. And the blessings of the cross will be upon us here in our nation, Nigeria, all the nations of Africa, all the nations beyond Africa. Blessings of the cross on everyone in Jesus' name. I will get my miracle. I will receive my miracle. Be it confirmed in your life in Jesus' name. Our Lord is great. Greater than your problem. Greater than your sorrow. Greater than your suffering. It's greater than your situation you find yourself. And tonight, as we come, celebrating the cross of Christ again, you find that the name of Christ, the power of Christ, the provision of Christ, everything he has done, will be greater than all your problems in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you tonight and bless your name. How we glorify you for who you are. How we glorify you for what you have done already and for what you are going to do in every life, everywhere, in all nations. Here tonight, we pray, O oh Lord, that everything that troubles your people will be subdued under the cross of Christ in Jesus' name. Sin will be forgiven. Peace will come to the heart. Your power from the cross will heal every infirmity and every sickness in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray tonight everywhere you put testimony in every mouth. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name, we we'll pray. And somebody shout another amen before you sit down. Thank you, and God bless you. I didn't hear an amen to that one. You can see that the blessing of the Lord. Tonight, we're looking at Psalm 67, verses 1 and 2. Psalm 67. And we're reading from verse 1 and from verse 2. God be merciful unto us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us. We're going to make it personal that verse 1, God be merciful unto me. Let me hear you say that. And bless me and cause your face to shine upon me. That's what's going to happen tonight. And when the face of God shines upon you, all your sins will be forgiven. Your heart will be changed. Your life will turn around. And every sickness in your body, everything will vanish away. God, the mighty God of heaven. God, the God of all possibilities. God, the God of all power. God, the creator of the heavens and the earth. God, the father of heaven and earth. God, the father of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
God, the creator and the master and the redeemer of all men. God, be merciful unto me. He was merciful to the children of Israel, they were delivered out of Egypt. It was merciful unto those people of old, and every problem in their lives, when he showed mercy unto them, every problem vanished away, and as we come, and then we repeat the prayer of the psalmist, and we say, God, be merciful unto us. Deliverance will come to you. Power will come to you. Authority will come to you. All the impossibilities of your life, they'll become possible in Jesus' name. And bless us. And bless us. There was one man in the Bible. His name Jabez. He had calamity. He had suffering. He had oppression. He had bondage. He had evil. He prayed one prayer. And he said, Lord, bless me. And everything in his life turned around. And as you come tonight and you pray that prayer, and you say, God, be merciful unto me and bless me, every bad thing will vanish away. Your life will turn around. And the power and the glory of the almighty God will descend upon your life. And tonight, what you have never seen, what you have never experienced in your life, you're going to have in Jesus' name. You must make it personal. And you must have personal faith and personal confidence in the Lord God, the God of heaven. Be merciful unto me here on earth and bless me and cause your face to shine upon me take your anger away from me take the punishment away from me take all that you are furious about take all that away and take the presence the pollution and the power of all my sins away and let your face shine upon me it will happen tonight heaven will smile at you god will smile at you and the face of god will shine upon your life in jesus name when that happens all that you have done in the past god will say go free i'm not going to punish you go free i'm not going to have any consequence of your sin upon you anymore because the face of the Lord shines upon you. Look at verse 2 now. It tells us in verse 2, it says, And thy way be made known upon earth that thy saving health among all nations. Look at the psalmist. is writing now as a prophet. And he's looking ahead. He's looking at the time and the day when Christ will come. And when he will be on the cross. And when the sacrifice of Christ on the cross will atone for the sins of all nations. That thy saving health, thy salvation one side, thy health on the other side. Put everything together that thy saving health may now be visible among all nations that's why we're having uh, this kind of crusade a global crusade bringing blessing upon all the nations of the world and whichever nation you belong to tonight the blessings from the cross will be upon your nation will be upon every family in that nation anyone connecting anyone associating anyone coming to the lord and saying oh lord here we are in our nation no nation is exempted no nation is forgotten by the lord what christ did on the cross of calvary he did for every nation and he did for our own nation you know there are people that think because they don't know they don't understand and we need to tell them you and i ought to tell them oh they said christianity 
Christ died on the cross is only for the Jews. No, all nations. They say Christianity is only for the people in the West. How about the people in the East? How about the people in the North? How about the people in the South? For all nations, healing for all nations, salvation for all nations. Power for all nations, deliverance, liberation for all nations that thy way may be known upon earth, thy saving health among all nations. I welcome you tonight. You are going to experience that saving health, salvation for you tonight, healing for you tonight, deliverance for you tonight, redemption for you tonight. Provision for you tonight, joy and happiness for you tonight, in Jesus' name. God, be merciful unto us. That's how that sinner prayed that Jesus spoke about, and the sinner came, he could not even look up, and then he smote his breast. He knew that he was a sinner, and all the prayer he prayed, God, be merciful unto me, a sinner. As you pray that prayer tonight, it's a prayer from a penitent heart, from a repentant heart. It's a prayer from a submissive heart. And when you do that tonight, the mercy of God in salvation, in healing, in blessing will come upon you. Lord, God of heaven, be merciful unto me and bless me and bless me god sent the lord jesus christ to bless you in turning you away from all your sins and he does that every time he has not changed the same yesterday today and forever he will bless you tonight he'll forgive your sin tonight He'll take that calamity away tonight and then the blessing of healing. I rejoice with you tonight. Healing will come to you and healing will get to you there. And let your face shine upon us. The light coming from Christ and the light of Calvary will shine upon your life. And then his way will be made known unto you. And his saving hells in our nation. I said in our nation, in all the other nations, everyone tonight connected, the blessing will come upon your life. Tonight I'm talking to you on the blessings from the cross for all nations. Blessings from the cross for all nations. Galatians chapter 3, I'm looking at verse 8. In Galatians chapter 3, looking at verse 8, he's still telling us the same thing and the scripture. For seeing that God would justify the heathen through faith. God will justify the unbelievers through faith. God will justify every sinner through faith. Preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. Hold that in your heart. Hold that in your mind. That in Christ, the Christ who died for us in Christ, the Christ who was crucified on the cross of Calvary. In thee shall all nations be blessed. The blessings from the cross for all nations. We're looking at the message in three perspectives. Number one is the saving health by Christ for all nations. Always at that for all nations and everyone in every nation and the blessing comes upon you and the blessings are available. Saving hell by Christ for all nations. Number two, salvation, holiness through the crucified in all nations. The salvation of the Lord is not just for one nation. It's not just for Israel. It's for all nations and it's for all the Gentiles. Everyone, everywhere, the scripture has confirmed 
In thee shall all nations be blessed. Salvation and holiness, salvation and righteousness through the crucified in all nations. And then number three, supernatural hell. The Lord will help you tonight. Let me hear you. Amen. The Lord brings supernatural hell. What does that mean? Something beyond human power, human strength, human ability. What the experts of the world, trained people in the world, what they have not been able to do for you. The Lord tonight will do it for every one of us. Supernatural hell from the cross. It's done already. Guys, crucified already and the lord has provided and made the way for you to have the blessing of the lord because it's done already all you do is you get up you say lord i'm here and you are the god of all flesh and here i am i need help i need strength I need skill, I need ability, I need enablement, I need power. And then the Lord comes in tonight, tonight, tonight for you. And the Lord comes in and the blessing of God comes upon you in Jesus' name. Let's come to number one now, saving health by Christ for all nations. Saving health by Christ. For all nations, look at Mark chapter 16, and I'm reading from verse 15. Mark chapter 16, reading from verse 15, it says, Go ye into all the world, all the nations of the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. You see that? All nations, and then every creature in every nation, that the gospel comes to you. What's that? When it says gospel, it means good news. It means a glad tidings. It means something that will turn your life around. Where there is sadness, gladness will come. Where there is sorrow, happiness will come. Where there is suffering, relief will come unto you. It's the good news that whatever you are going through now, whatever the problem, Whatever the challenge, whatever the sickness, whatever the infirmity, whatever the lack, the Lord has come and is bringing blessing upon your life. It is mine. I said it is mine. Salvation will be yours in Jesus' name. Deliverance will be yours in Jesus' name. Look at that. It says you go into all the world, every nation every tribe every community and then you preach you declare you proclaim the gospel the good news the glad tidings and the sacrifice of jesus what is done already proclaim that to every creature and then it says in verse 16 he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth, what you have to do is that you believe. Now, many people do not understand. Believe. What does that mean? What it means is this. You're looking for the light. You're being in darkness. And then you understand why you close your door. You lock your door and there's darkness there. And then I shout to you. And I say, light is here. If you actually believe that, that light is there, where I announce to you, you will open your door, you will come, you will come into the light. You believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. What does that mean? You've been in the darkness, in the dark, in the darkness of sin, in the darkness of evil, in the darkness of occultism, in the darkness of idol worship, and the darkness covers you. And I say, hey, I have good news for you. I'm glad tidings for you. I have the gospel for you. The light of the world is Christ. And it's going to bring the light enlightening me. It brings that to you. It's going to bring the light the light of salvation, the joy of salvation is going to turn your life around. 
if you believe that you come you open your door you open the door of your heart you don't close up you don't say i have tradition i have religion i have idol i have one old man somewhere i have one old woman somewhere rubbing my belly if you believe you come out of that darkness and you come to christ the light of the world you are coming tonight i said you are coming tonight and when you come all the darkness immediately instantaneously will vanish away now the light does not drive uh, the darkness away little by little by little have you been in a room that is dark totally black totally dark and you put on the light the light does not shine in this corner 10 percent then another five percent then another 20 percent the moment the light comes the whole room is in light and because it is instantaneous. All the darkness will vanish away. When you come to Christ, as you hear the gospel, when you come to Christ, as you hear the good news, all the darkness instantaneously, immediately, Christ, the light comes in, all your darkness will vanish away. He that believeth and is baptized, shall be saved but then you know there are people i pray you will not be in this category i will not be in this category let me hear you i will not be in this category he that believes not is done why because he remains in darkness because he does not come to the light because he remains in the darkness of idolatry, of occultism, in the darkness of the gangster of gangsterism, in the darkness of alcohol, in the darkness of marijuana, in the darkness of evil, in the darkness of the devil. Because he remains, he says, I'm going to remain here with Satan, with the devil, with uh, the gang. I'm going to remain there where devil goes. That's uh, what he wants to go. And the devil is damned already. Satan is damned already. And Satan is going to spend eternity in hellfire forever and ever. And the people who hold on to Satan, darkness, they hold on to their sin, darkness, they, they make their choice. They say they want to be damned with Satan. I will not be damned with Satan. I will not be damned in sin. You quit the sin. You forsake the sin. You abandon the sin. You say, Satan, whether you like it or not, I will not stay with you. I will not travel with you. I will not perish with you. And you snatch yourself out of the hand of that Satan. You come to the light. Then I congratulate you. You are saved in Jesus' name. And then look at chapter 13, verse 10 of that Mark. Mark chapter 13, verse 10. And it says, and the gospel remember again that's the good news remember again that the glad tidings remember again that's a message that comes from christ the christ of calvary to turn your life around and to bring joy and happiness and healing and salvation and eternal life unto you the gospel and the gospel must first be preached among all nations that's what we're doing now we're doing our part your part is to accept that gospel believe that gospel embrace that gospel personalize that gospel and say it is for me and every blessing in the gospel will become yours in jesus name that's number one, saving health, salvation, saving health, healing, saving health, deliverance, 
by Christ for all nations and for you. For me. For me. Okay, you will probably tonight when I invite you to come to Christ, to leave darkness and to come to the light and to have the gospel, the good news experienced in your life. Let me come to number two now. Number two is salvation and holiness through the crucified in all nations once again salvation for everyone in all nations once again righteousness for everyone in all nations as you come to the lord and you realize he has made the provision for you and he wants you just to come come out of where you have been and then come to the salvation of the lord and the righteousness of the Lord. Now, hold on. Righteousness, holiness. You know, there are people that sow their own garment of holiness, righteousness. That's what Adam and Eve tried to do. And since that time, all the descendants of Adam and Eve, they have been trying to sow for themselves a garment of righteousness, a garment of holiness. And when Christ now comes and he presents to them the real garment. Now, understand? Only that garment that is sown in heaven can be allowed to get to heaven and say it with the almighty God and with the angels of God because the garment they have, the robe of righteousness they have was made in heaven. Any kind of garment, any kind of robe that is made over here in your locality there, and then you say, I have my fig leaves sown like Adam and Eve. They saw they were naked. And as they were naked, because of their sin and because of their righteousness, they were ashamed of themselves. And so they went to cut down fig leaves and then sew together, made on earth not suitable for heaven. And you know the kind of garment people wear, they say, I don't smoke too much, only a little. They say, I'm better than so and so. They say, I go to church, and then I try to comport myself and live carefully on Sunday for two or three hours in the church. When they come out, they keep on lying. When they come out, they keep on stealing. When they come out, they keep on fighting. When they come out, they keep on in their cruelty and in their evil. And then the following Sunday, they go back again. Oh God, I'm here again. I'm sowing my fig leaves now. What I shouldn't have done, I have done. What I should have done, I have not done. And then they make the sign of the cross in Jesus' name. Amen. And then they go out and continue in their sin. That kind of garment, religious garment, churchianity, will not take you to heaven. It is like the one that Adam and Eve sowed. They were still dreaming out of the Garden of Eden. And then Christ comes and he says, you cannot sow any kind of garment of righteousness, any garment of holiness that will make you acceptable in heaven. He said, I've been there for all eternity. And I came to give you a garment from heaven, the garment and the robe of righteousness that comes from heaven. And I've been wearing it, and I give it to you free of charge. You're happy tonight. And then when heaven looks at you, they see the righteousness of Christ on you holiness of christ on you and the angels will appreciate they rejoice because you have repented and you have come unto the lord salvation that comes with holiness and righteousness through christ the crucified in all nations it will come upon you i said it will come upon you
Can I hear a good, good amen? Look at Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 55. I'm reading from verse 5. Behold, thou shalt call a nation that thou knowest not. The nation that did not know God. The nation that did not know Christ. The nation that was not connected, converted to Christ. Now it says, thou shalt call a nation that thou knowest not and nations plural and nations plural and nations that knew thee and that knew not thee shall run unto thee that's what we do when we realize that only Christ has the righteousness that will be available that will be acceptable in heaven no other man whether in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, St. Peter, St. Paul, St. Augustine, or Moses, or David, nobody can give you that righteousness and salvation, only Christ. And when you hear that, that now Christ has come, and Christ was crucified, and he was crucified for you, and he's going to give you free of charge, that salvation now, you cannot get it any other place. Only in Christ, you have this. You run unto him because of the Lord thy God. And for the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified thee. He has glorified thee. Let me remind you. When Adam and Eve eventually appeared before God and they had their fig leaves on them, he looked at them and he said, what is that? Where's that coming from? What do you want to do with that? They were not glorified. But then when Christ comes and then he puts his own robe of righteousness upon you before heaven and before the angels and before the almighty God, you look glorified. It will happen tonight. Glorified. Angels will look at you and say that is glorified because it's the righteousness of Christ giving unto you that you are wearing the salvation comes with the glory of God, with the splendor of the Lord, and with the beauty of heaven upon your life. How will you get that? How will it happen unto you? Look at verse 6. It says in verse 6, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. When you want to buy the earthly clothes, what do you do? You go out of the house and you go to a place where they can sew that for you. You are seeking the a place where that garment can be made for you. Now in the spiritual, if you want this holy garment and this righteous garment, the one that is made from heaven and the one that came only from Christ, what are you going to do? You seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. When the nearest place you can get. And the most ready place you can get that salvation and that holiness, righteousness, garment of righteousness is in a crusade like this. When every scene from the beginning of prayer and the choruses and those trumpeters and the choir and the choir from all nations and then prayer is going on everywhere and your heart is drawn to the Lord when you are hearing the message of the gospel and you say now is the day of salvation that's the best time that's the most ready time to seek the Lord while he may be found and call you upon him while while he is near now how do i call upon him how do you call upon him let's say for example now somebody has been dirty and is wearing dirty clothes he wants to put on new clothes and then you give the new clothes to him and then he puts on the on the dirty clothes the body is dirty the clothes are dirty, and he puts on the dirty clothes as he's walking about. The smell 
of the body that had not been washed for many days the smell will be coming out and the odor that is coming out from the old clothes all that is coming out because it's joining the old and the new what do we do if we're going to have the benefit of the use of the new clothes we remove the old clothes dirty defiled smelling and then we go for a wash and we'll wash very well and as we are clean we then put the new clothes on the clean body what am i saying you want to have the robe of righteousness from christ what do you do you go for a wash what can wash my sin away tell me nothing but the blood of jesus what can take all the stains away nothing but the blood of jesus if you walk in the light as he is in the light then we have fellowship one with another and the blood of jesus christ his son cleanses us from all sin the blood of jesus washes you as you come you turn away from the defilement but if you are like the pig the pig that the owner may wash and immediately after the washing goes back to the mud again and rolling in the mire then there's no there's no good washing henna that pig but as the lord washes us and he cleanses us and he puts the robe of righteousness upon us free of charge for chase from calvary then we now walk in the newness of life and the angels will keep on appreciating that that man has turned that woman has turned and is now walking in the righteousness of the lord all that i've explained now let me read to you from verse seven in verse seven it says let the wicked forsake it's way that's what made us odious smelling dirty defiled in the sight of god we forsake that ledge the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return let him return you must forsake you must abandon you must quit all those things before you return you cannot just say here am i okay christ they said you have the garment of righteousness you have the robe of righteousness and you have that salvation for me here i come uh, you forsake your way and the righteous man will forsake his thoughts and let him return unto the lord and he will have mercy upon him who is the him he will have mercy upon him i said who is that are you there can i see you there mercy will come to you salvation will come to you forgiveness will come to you and they will have mercy upon him and to our god for he will abundantly pardon everything you have ever done wrong everything you've ever spoken wrong everything you have ever put your hand your mouth your heart your life your eyes that is evil into the lord will forgive you tonight and then it will change your life everything will become totally new in your life from tonight in jesus name and remember this is the gospel of salvation the gospel of forgiveness the gospel of his righteousness coming to you you will get it tonight verse 8 verse 8 says for my thoughts are not your thoughts neither are your ways my ways says the lord the lord is telling us there are people that want to do it spiritually like they've done it physically naturally if we're going to have any new clothes we pay if we're going to have any new dress 
we pay. But now he's saying, that's not my way. You cannot pay. You cannot even pay for good dressing that is sown in some parts of the world. You don't have the money. Now this one that is sown in heaven, the robe of righteousness, and the robe, the garment of holiness, and the salvation of the Lord, you cannot pay. Only one person could pay. You see, even Moses could not pay for Aaron, or pay for Miriam, or pay for any of the children of Israel. Even David could not pay for Solomon, or pay for Absalom. Even Peter could not pay for Mark, or anybody. Only Christ can pay this price. And therefore, your thoughts, I will do better. That's not the thought of God. I'll pay for what I've done. Once you pay for what you've done, you're finished. Because the soul that sinneth, it shall die. And the only price you can pay is death. And once you die, you're forever gone. And you go to the other side. The thought of God is now. You cannot do it yourself, but I'll do it for you. I'll send my only begotten son. He will die for you. He will bear your punishment. And then you'll be free. My thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are my ways are your ways my ways, says the Lord. You take the thought of the Lord and the way of the Lord tonight salvation will come to you you're not be trying i'm trying to do better i'm turning over a new leaf i'm cutting down my smoking i used to smoke 10 every day now i'm smoking five i'm cutting down little by little that will not do can you empty the ocean with a cup a glass in your hand you go to the ocean you take a glass out and pour it away you go back again and then you take another cup and pay and pour it away you cannot empty the ocean with a glass a cup in your hand your ocean of sin your well of iniquity you cannot uh, empty that with a little, I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. Only Christ can do it. And Christ has done it for you. Christ has done it for me. I said Christ has done it for me. And as you come tonight, it will forgive you. It will cleanse your life. It will change your heart. And then you have the salvation and the holiness, the righteousness through the crucified in whatever nation you are. And then in verse 9, he tells us, For the heavens are higher than they are, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. Then in verse 10, it says, For as the rain cometh down, as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not hither, but watereth the earth, watereth all nations, and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater. Then in verse 11, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth the word of salvation going forth unto you the word of healing going forth unto you and the word of deliverance going forth unto you it shall not return unto me void but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I send it. The word of God will prosper in your life today. The word of God brings salvation, you have salvation. It brings healing, you, you have healing. It brings deliverance, you have deliverance tonight in Jesus' name. Miracle. Shout miracle. For who is coming your way? Yeah. Praise God, you'll not miss it tonight. As the rain cometh down, as the rain was coming down, 
folk can look up and say, hey, go back to where you are coming from. Nobody. And as the ring comes down, so the blessing of salvation, of healing, of deliverance, of redemption will come upon you tonight and nobody will deny you of that miracle in Jesus' name. I'm coming to point number three now. In point number three, supernatural help from the cross for all nations. Supernatural help from the cross for all nations. Those who are helpless before this time, as you have Jesus Christ in your life tonight, help will come. Solace will come. Your tears will be wiped away. Your sorrow will be taken away. Now, look at the situation. Somebody is poor, ragged, sick, almost dying. And then a little child comes and he says, I will help you. The person will say, go away. You don't understand your little child. Somebody who does not even, cannot take care of himself, he comes. And he says, I will help you. You say, go away. Look at yourself. You cannot even help yourself. And say, you are going to help me. We were all in sin. We have all been in evil. And we don't have help from anywhere. And then somebody who himself is a slave of sin, is a captive of sin. Any human being on earth that himself is not able to stand straight every day of his life. And then he says, I will help you. No, he cannot help. Philosophers cannot help. Psychologists cannot help. The people on the other side of the river, they cannot help. The one in the jungle, they cannot help. Abelis cannot help. Look at his own family and look at his own appearance. He cannot help himself. He cannot help you. But hell is coming from on high. Hell is coming from God. And that God that says, I will help you, that hell has now come. I rejoice with you. As you accept the help of God tonight, every need of your life will be satisfied in Jesus' name. Look at Isaiah chapter 41. Isaiah chapter 41. I'm reading from verse 10. In Isaiah chapter 41, this is not Isaiah talking. This is the Almighty God talking unto you. It says, Fear thou not. Will he save me? Fear thou not. Will he heal me? Fear thou not. Will he rescue me? Fear thou not. Will he deliver me? Fear, that, fear thou not. Help has come. For you, help has come. What men cannot do, what women cannot do, what herbalists cannot do, what the people on the other side of the river cannot do, the Almighty God who never lost any battle, the Almighty God who is mighty and powerful, He tells you tonight, fear thou not. You know, some people they say, I'm such a terrible sinner. And I've done so much evil. Can God save me? Fear thou not. I've done what I'm even finding difficult to forgive myself. I was foolish. I was dirty. I was evil. I, I went into crime. I'm a criminal. Will God ever forgive me? Fear thou not. I have sickness. I have infirmity. I have oppression. I have attack. I have madness, I have whatever. Can God help me? Fear thou not. I'm looking at you. I said I'm looking at you. And I say tonight, fear thou not. It will rule your problems away. It will forgive your sin. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. I am with thee. Think about that. Think about that. He's talking to everyone in all nations. And only God can say, I am in Nigeria. I am in Ghana. I'm in Liberia. I'm in America. I am in Europe. All at the same time. Anywhere you are, that's why he's God. 
nobody else in the whole universe can be everywhere with all people every time only god and god is with you right there fear thou not for i am with thee be not dismayed for i am thy god your problem is solved the creator said i am thy god the savior says i am thy god the healer says i am thy god the one that can raise the dead and bring it into life it says i am god congratulations tonight the lord has put you in a special place and he says i will strengthen thee you're so weak and you cannot walk your legs are lame you are paralyzed or maybe you are just totally weak from the inside to breathe is even a problem the lord said as we begin to pray tonight and your link and connect with the lord he will strengthen thee yes. you will rise up and walk your blind eyes will see and every bad thing in your life everything will be rolled away he says yeah that means yes now when god says yes that yes rings all over in heaven and rings and sounds all over on earth when god says yes that yes enters the ears of the devil and it deafens the devil it's like an arrow when god says yes that he shoots at the devil and the devil will run away from you and the demons will run away from you it says yea yes i will help you yea i will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness if i get saved can i stand if i get saved all those sins i've committed for so many years will they not come back again and drag me down no the lord said i will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness praise the lord somebody there said praise the lord look at us look at verse 13 in verse 13 for i the lord thy god if you abandon Satan, because God will not share you with Satan, he will not share his glory, he will not share any person, he will not share any seed, he will not share the throne of your heart with any other person with Satan. When you totally abandon Satan, and you abandon Satan, it says, for I, the Lord, thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, fear not i will help thee you have heard the voice of the lord tonight i'm just like microphone and the theater the voice of the lord coming through me tells me to tell you that the lord will help you impossibilities will become possible in your life salvation will be given to you tonight healing will be given to you tonight and all the bondage of your life will be totally loosed and cut and caught in pieces and you are free tonight in jesus name your sins will be forgiven your yoke will be broken your sickness will be healed your calamity will be taken away lord will transport you everything concerning you it will make a record of you in heaven and anywhere you go from today the lord will say that's my child that's my child when satan wants to come he says, stop right there that's my child and when evil people want to come and put you say stop right there that's my child you become a child of god tonight and everything will turn for the better in your life in jesus name welcome 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 to the blessing of god welcome to the salvation of god welcome to the provision of god it is for you i rejoice with you every head bowed 
and all eyes closed this time you want to have the benefit you want to have the blessing of this salvation salvation from heaven salvation from god you want that salvation now christ has provided it for you and you say lord i abandon satan i abandon sin i abandon evil you promise to help me i come for that help and i come for the robe of righteousness take me lord cleanse me lord forgive me lord i turn away from evil where are you the lord is waiting for you Raise up your hand right there. Raise up your hand and say, Lord, I raise up my hand to say, I surrender. I surrender. I give myself unto you. I want to have your help. I want to have your salvation. I want to have your forgiveness. Where are you? Where are you? Hurry up. Raise up that hand. Raise up that hand and say, Lord, I am here. Lord, I am here. I will not remain with Satan. I will not remain in my sin. I come. Lord, I come. And I receive you as my Savior. Raise up that hand. If you're raising up your hand, you will rise up. Stand up on your feet. Stand up on your feet. God bless you. That's good. Stand up, stand up. And tell the Lord where you're standing and while you're raising up your hand, oh Lord, I come. Remember, going to church alone, that does not uh, solve the problem. Remember, I belong to Christianity. That doesn't solve the problem. I was born as yeah, a Christian. Uh -uh, nothing like that. Your heart was still evil. You were still doing the lying and the city and the cheating and the stealing. But now Christ says, I offer you salvation. I offer you forgiveness. Raise up that hand and stand up and say, Lord, here I am. Here I am. Here I am. Lord, I give myself to you. Where are you? Where are you? Before we close, we're still waiting for you. Don't allow the door to close on you tonight. You can have that forgiveness right now in all the nations, wherever you are. Remember what Christ did on the cross of Calvary is for all people in all nations. Raise up your hand wherever you are. Any nation, any country, any locality. And stand up right now and say, Lord, I give myself to you. Father, we're going to pray now. Keep on standing. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bring all these people who have raised up their hands and they have stood up. We bring them before you. Grant them your salvation in Jesus' name. We're asking, oh Lord, all their past sins, forgive them in Jesus' name. Their dirty lives, cleanse them, wash them. Touch them in Jesus' name. And Lord, the weakness of their life, I pray you turn that weakness to strength, and they will no more be doing those things out of the weakness of the flesh in Jesus' name. I pray that that robe of righteousness that he made in heaven, that Christ has brought, and Christ provides for everyone through his death on the cross of Calvary, I pray that that robe of righteousness, of holiness, grant you every one of them in Jesus' name. Write their names in the book of life in heaven. And I pray that when they eventually leave this world, they'll be with you forever and ever in Jesus' name. Confirm each and every life. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Keep on standing, God bless you. Keep on standing, and our counselors will be there uh, to take some details before we come back to pray for the sick. As the said, it's taking over now. Counselors, write their names in capital letter. Take their phone numbers their house address, and the local government where they come from. Please 
and the rest of you be praying and don't go anywhere god will touch you tonight so don't run just the buses are ready waiting for you and we believe that tonight is your night please cancel us write their name in capital letters and at the same time their phone numbers if you're online follow what you're seeing on your screen there is a whatsapp number you can call there is a card that will be given to you by the counselors that special card make sure you hold it for the breakfast with jesus on monday for those of you online there's a connect with christ the link is on your screen now while others are praying preparing tonight is your night cancel us be fast write their names write their addresses very well the local government where they come from their phone numbers and those collecting please be close let's do that quickly As people are getting saved here, you can be also get saved online. Believe the man of God. Jesus has saved you. And this salvation is real. Please cancel us, be fast. If you are joining us through television or radio, you're saved already. Follow the WhatsApp li link and you go to the GS Facebook page. The WhatsApp number is on the screen now 070 527. 81389. You can send message to that number now. And you will connect with Christ immediately. God bless you. Please cancel us be fast. If you are true, those on my left hand, can you wave? Be fast. Those at the right hand, if you are finished, can you wave your hand? Let me see. Let's be fast. Those facing me, if you are finished, can you wave your hand? Okay. What about the left hand side? If you are finished, wave your hand. Make sure you go at the very back. Thank God for those who are praying. The Lord will visit you tonight. You will not go here empty handed. Any moment from now, the power will be released. On my left hand side, if you are finished, wave your hand.
What of on the right hand side? If you are finished, wave your hand. Cancel us. Be fast. Be fast. Just their name in capital letter, their phone numbers, their house address, the local government where they come from. Tonight is your night. If you are finished, please let me know. Wave your hand. Okay. Be warming up now for your miracle. Something is coming. Power is coming. Tonight is your night. The lame will rise. The blind will see. The man of God is ready. Rise up now. Rise up now. Praise the Lord. Everybody has said praise the Lord. If you know your miracle is now, your deliverance is now, your healing is now, shout hallelujah. Now, you must expect that God is not a liar, that God is faithful and true. That what he said he will do, he will do. And what he said you have, you have. And when you come with that expectation, with that faith, with that trust, believe him that what he has said he will confirm. He will confirm it in your life in Jesus' name. If you are blind, you will expect. That what he said he will do, he will do. Your blind eyes will open. Amen. You brought anybody deaf and dumb, you'll not just be looking at other people, you will know that this boy, this girl, this man, this woman, deaf and dumb, that the power from on high will touch him, will touch her, and the miracle will happen. And when you open your eyes to check up, you check up with the confidence that you know God cannot fail. If you are paralyzed, you are just lying down there. It's not just that we pray, we pray for praying sake. It is that the power will come upon you there and the power will strengthen your bones, strengthen your joints, you rise up and you are going to walk. And any challenge you have, any problem you have, you understand what I said, I will heal you, I will help you, I will deliver you. And you know, it's going to do it. You come with that expectation. And when we pray, you know God is at work. Is at work in your life. At work in your body, Amen. at work in your brain, Amen. at work in your mind. Amen. Get ready. As we pray now, the power will come. Amen. You raise up one hand and you lay your hand, the other hand, in the place where you have the challenge. And you know for a certainty that the Lord will confirm. The miracle, the healing, the deliverance in your body tonight. Amen. Father, we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for the power that cannot fail. We thank you for the promise you have given, and you're not a liar. What you said you will do, you will definitely do. You said you will heal your people. And you said the healing will be in all nations. Your saving health made known, revealed, and confirmed in all nations. I pray, Lord, at this very time now, 
get into action, supernatural action, and heal your people in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, whatever the devil has done, whatever evil spirits have done, whatever sickness, infirmity has done in any life, reverse it now in every life in Jesus' name. I pray you send forth your saving health upon everyone, healing for everyone, deliverance for everyone. You break every chain in the lives of the people in Jesus' name. Every yoke you destroy, every work of the devil you destroy, and there will be spectacular manifestation everywhere now in Jesus' name. Spirit of madness and sanity, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. All those things moving about in the body, causing destruction and causing death in the lives of the people, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for those who have any swelling in their body, whatever it is, I pray you touch them now at the point of their need, and I pray you deflate everything, and all the swelling will vanish away in Jesus' name. Those who are sick, at any level, even to the point of death, I pray you bring life to them right now. Heal them in Jesus' name. Everything that is called incurable disease, kill them now. Heal them now. Set them free now. Blind eyes be opened in Jesus' name. Dumb tongues speak out in Jesus' name. The ears begin to hear in Jesus' name. Paralyzed or having stroke or having broken bone, I pray the power of God will touch you right now. Be healed. Be delivered. Rise up and walk. Everywhere, Lord, to the right, to the left, in front, at the back, anywhere, there's anything that is the work of the devil, destroy everything. Set every captive free here and in every nation. Confirm it by your mighty power. In Jesus' name I pray. The man of God has prayed for you. The miracle is there. This is the time you check up and you will see that the miracle is there. Do that.